Hey everyone, happy Vlogmas. Um, my name is Laura and welcome to my channel. Today I have a uh, sort and hopefully unhaul with me. I have my little box here. Well, I say little, but you know, it's this size um, of my cozy mysteries. So these are all on red. And I think they probably need to be sorted through. I started reading cozies maybe eight or nine years ago, maybe 10, and really, really liked them. But as I've read more and more throughout the years, I'm realizing that there's a lot that I don't like. And like any kind of genre fiction, there are tropes that really get under my skin that I can't stand anymore that I used to really like. So I thought I would go through these with you guys and see what I have here, see what I still feel like reading. Um, I might save some for a try chapter. I don't know. We'll see what happens. But yeah, hopefully I can thin the herd just a little bit. So these are all alphabetical, roughly. So right off the top, I have Susan Wittig Albert, The Darling Dahlias, and The Cucumber Tree. This is the start to her Darling Dahlias series. So this is about... Um, it's set in the Great Depression in Alabama, in Darling, Alabama. And their garden club is called the Darling Dahlias. Um, suspicious Car Wreck, Buried Secrets, Escaped Convict, Ghost Herd Digging Around the Cucumber Tree. Hmm, let's see what, oh. Okay, this sounds okay, but look how teeny this print is. Like this is crazy, crazy small. Yeah, I'm gonna let this go. I know that the library has them. There are several copies in my county library system. So if I ever want to read it again, I can get my hands on it. Um, that isn't always the case. Quick side note, when I was working at my local library, my local branch, I was a shelver and I also worked in the back, checking books in, sorting books, helping to weed out things, etc. So they do go through, my library went through the collections on a fairly regular basis, uh, but because our mystery section, the shelving that they have allotted to it uh, was fairly small and it's at a very, very popular section. If a book hadn't been checked out in the last year, it got weeded immediately, which means they just pulled it and then they would eventually sell it in a library sale. Now, most of the other libraries in the system don't do that regularly. Um, and because we were so slammed for space, there's very often like three books out of a four book series that are actually at my local library. And the first one just hadn't been checked out randomly in that the year before. So they get rid of it. So they do that a lot. It drives me absolutely crazy. I hate it. And you would think if it was a very popular section, you would just increase the shelf space at least occasionally or shift some things around. No, not them. They just get rid of books. So side ramble, side rant, but I know this is in lots of other library systems, so I know I can let this one go. Um, let's do that. Okay, next up, is this right? Okay, I have a bunch of Ellery Adams. This is the Book Retreat Mystery Series by Ellery Adams. So I've got Murder in the Secret Garden, Murder in the Paperback Parlor, and Murder in the Mystery Suite. I don't know if it's like one, two, and three. I think it is, yeah. These just sound cute. I've never read Ellery Adams before. I'm sure this is also a pseudonym for somebody else, you know. Yeah. Storybook Resort of Storyton Hall. Cheesy, perhaps, but this sounds interesting to me. How is the print? Not bad. So, okay, I'm going to hang on to these three for sure. Put them next to Roger. I still haven't undecorated for Thanksgiving, so Roger the turkey is still hanging out with me. Next up is another Ellery Adams series. Charmed Pie Shop. Okay, so I've got... Pies and Prejudice, a Breach of Crust, Lemon Pies, and Little White Lies. I have an actual print copy, and then I have an advanced reader's copy that is signed. Pecan Pies and Homicide, and Peach Pies and Alibis. I think this is the first. 
No, it's not. I don't know what it is. Anyways, pie shop in Georgia. Oh, she can lace her baked goods with enchantments. I like that. Reminds me of like water for chocolate. Searching for the origin of her magical powers. Ooh, handsome Hugh Dillon. Hmm. Okay, yeah. I know I don't need to keep both of these copies, but I don't know what to do. I mean, I'll deal with it later. I don't want to deal with it right now. <laughs> Ignore it. It's not there. La, 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 la. Okay. Uh, next up. You're in some bees. So this is a complete trilogy. I know that already. This is by C.C. Beniston. Death, in Bucking Death at Buckingham Palace. Death at Sandringham House. And Death at Windsor Castle. So one of... Housemaid, that's what it is. Jane B. Her Majesty calls... This is about this book. I should put this first. Her Majesty calls Jane to the throne room to attend to a rather large stain, the blood-soaked carpet beneath a very dead Roger Pettiman, found with a ceremonial sword in his back. So, a trilogy set in Buckingham Palace and various royal palaces. I think we all know that I'm just going to keep this because, yeah, it's me. <laughs> and I am into it. Okay. This is one I'm not sure about. This is a quintet. No, is that five? Let's go with quintet by Anthony Elgin. Ooh, English Garden Mystery Series. So I've got the Blue Rose, which is the first. Gardens of, my Garden of Secrets past. I can read. Uh, the Lost Gardens. The Water Lily Cross and The Trail of the Wild Rose. Now these sound good, obviously I own them. I know my mom has read this series and liked it. She said she didn't love it, but she did enjoy it. So, um, Alex and Kate Shepard have found the perfect house, the home they always dreamed of owning, deep in the Wiltshire countryside, surrounded by a two acre walled garden. After moving in, they find a blue rose bush in their walled garden but that is not a thing that should exist. So find themselves plunged into a world of coded journals, genetic experiments, cold-blooded greed, and ultimately murder. So they have to solve the secret of Blue Rose. This sounds interesting. And it's all like garden-y stuff. I like garden stuff. I mean, yeah, I think I'll keep those. What you want to bet? I'm gonna knock everything over at some point in here. Okay, another garden series this is just a quartet by mary freeman so yeah the first book is devil's trumpet second is deadly nightshade sorry for all the glare uh third bleeding heart and the fourth is garden view so she, uh, Rachel O'Connor owns Rain County, or sorry, Country Landscaping. Creates new surroundings in the quiet town of Blossom. Mm. Uh, one of her clients' bodies is found dead at the bottom of a nearby nearby cliff. She thinks he was murdered. No one else does. So she decides to investigate. This sounds a little bit too busybody-y to me. Um... I also know these are hard to find and I'm not sure if that's just because they weren't they were never reprinted or if it's because they're not good no offense to Miss Freeman if you're watching I'm sure she's not I think I will do a try a chapter for these um, let's put them by my water glass and see how that goes I don't know there's another series that I have tried previously it was new at the time so within the past maybe six or seven years it was the first new one it's still being written and printed but it features a woman, it's kind of similar to that, who um, owns either a florist or a gardening company. I, I don't remember quite which it is, but she ends up solving, like she like, finds a body at, at a party she's catering or whatever, decorating. And she is so arrogant and really dumb 
she is insulting to everyone around her, including her former high school best friend, who is now a police officer. She talks to him like he is so incredibly brain damaged that he can't even do anything for himself. I mean, she just is so mean and insulting to him. And it was such an obvious culprit of who did it. I got so mad. I finished the book just to make sure I was right, but I was so mad. I just thought, this is so stupid. And people are still reading it and it's really popular. I don't get it. I don't know side rant. <laughs> Aren't you glad I'm doing all this? Okay, so I have three in this series so far, but I know that there are more. This is by Ava Gates. Um, it's the, I don't know what it's called. Lighthouse Library series. So um, there is Reading Up a Storm booked for trouble and the first is by book or by crook because um, she was a librarian Lucy was a librarian at the Harvard Library um, tender relationship implodes calling on her aunt Ellen she hopes a little fun in the Outer Banks Sun will help clear her head she starts to work at the library on Bodie Island, which is a real island in the Outer Banks. When a priceless first edition Jane Austen novel is stolen and the chairman of the library board is murdered, Lucy suddenly finds herself ensnared in a real life mystery. This sounds good. My mom has read at least these three books, if not more, and she's really enjoyed them. And I believe I got this series from my friend Linda from Illinois. Hi, Linda. She's not watching. Um, <laughs> she's my friend, one of my friends from Library Thing, who I have met up with in real life several times. Actually, I owe her a text. Um, and she really liked this series. So I am going to keep these three. This sounds good. And I, I've read another series, too, that's set in the Outer Banks. I read the whole thing. It was written by a husband and wife team. I think her name, first name was Joyce. I don't know, but I really enjoyed it. That was really good. I will link it below once I figure out what it was, but that was nice. So looking forward to these. Okay. I have two by Lena Gregory and Bay Island Psychic Mystery, Clairvoyant and Present Danger and Occult and Battery. Death at First Sight is the first one and I liked it. It wasn't great, but I liked it. So I bought these two to follow up. There might be more, I don't know, but I am for sure going to keep these. I know I liked the first one, like I said, but I... I like stuff that's kind of psychic-y, ghosty things, so yes, please. I'm doing a great job at unhauling, aren't I? The one so far. Okay, I have a bunch of Charlene Harris here. Okay, so I've got two that are standalones, Sweet and Deadly and A Secret Rage. I think these were maybe her first two published books. This one I think was her very first. I have not heard good things about them but they're not terribly popular. I think people are more into her series and rightfully so, I'm more into her series as well. But I really like her. She's one of my favorite like comfort go-to authors. So I will sure be keeping these, but I'm, I don't, don't feel I need to be a completist with her work for some reason. Um, I'm fine with library books or whatever for her. So if I don't like them, I will unhaul them, but let's see. And then I have the whole Shakespeare series, which is the Lily Bard series. And that's um, Shakespeare's Counselor, Shakespeare's Trollop, Shakespeare's Christmas, Shakespeare's Champion, and Shakespeare's Landlord. So I will for sure be reading these. I am reading with Ange, with an E, hey Ange. Um, I am reading the new, her newest series. Oh my God, what's it called? I want to say Midnight Texas, but that's a different trilogy. The Hunter, Bounty Hunter kind of person. Anyways, reading that one with Ange as it's being published, and I am halfway through, I don't remember the name either. Good thing I'm taping a video today. Um, that is about a woman who can sense the dead and she can help solve crimes, and it's the crimes kind of go together throughout the books, the first two at least, and it sounds like they do in the third and fourth as well. It's about a sister and her non-blood-related stepbrother and um, how, the, how they help the cops and stuff. So I, I am liking that and working through that, but this is the last complete series of hers that's already published that I need to read. So for sure keeping this. Okay, next up. I don't know if this is a trilogy or not, but it's by Ellen Elizabeth Hunter. So the third book is Murder at the Azalea Festival, 
second Murder on the Candlelight Tour, and the first is Murder on the Ghost Walk. This is the Ashley Wilkes series. This is very thin. I like that. Um, oh. Wilmington, North Carolina. Mm, Ashley, newly commissioned to work as a historic preservationist on one of Orange Street's stunning antebellum homes. It's not the ghosts she tangles with, but actual dead bodies. Two skeletons have added more spice to the season. She starts poking around in the house. Scandalous truth. It sounds good to me. And it's just three, and they're fairly thin. How's the print? Actually, really decent. Not large, but, I mean, like, much better. You know? I have to think about things like my old eyes and wearing glasses all the time. Print does start to matter, especially in most markets. Okay. Um, I have one, this one, Julie Hizzy. Is it Hizzy or Heisey? Grace Under Pressure, a Manor House Mystery. This is the first in that series. Mm. Grace Wheaton, lover of history and mystery, both of which can be found in her hometown's palatial Marshfield Manor. She starts working as a curator there and then, ooh, uninvited stalker. So I will, you know what, I'm gonna do try a chapter for this. I really, really liked her White House Chef mystery series. That was so good. Um, easy to read and the main character wasn't too stupid to live which I always appreciate when you're fun and like following someone's footsteps um, so I will see how this goes and if I don't like it that's fine I can let it go too all right I have what may be a trilogy I don't know by Rebecca Kent look how tangy these are so the third one is murder has no class it's very shiny ex library copy finished off and High Marks for Murder is the first one. Um, welcome to Bellhaven Finishing School, located in the English Cotswolds. Run by a headmistress who can turn the most incorrigible tomboy into a refined young lady. It's where the well-to-do send their daughters. It's the heart of elegance, the seat of sophistication, the scene of murder. Hmm? Like, ruh, ruh, raggy. Their home management teacher, Kathleen Duncan is found dead in the school's garden. Headmistress Meredith Llewellyn assumes it was an accident until she learns the limb didn't break off the tree. It was neatly sawed off. Hmm. She's seeing foggy images in the flower, pointing to the flower beds. This sounds cute, interesting, creepy, ghosty. Set in a big mansion in the Cotswolds. Yes, 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 yes. Okay. The start of a series, Murder in an Irish Village by Carleen O'Connor. Uh, Siobhan O'Sullivan, along with her five siblings, runs the family bistro named for their mother. One morning, they discover a man seated at an outside table with a pair of hot pink barber scissors sticking out of his chest. With the local Garda suspecting the O'Sullivans and their business in danger of being shunned, it's up to feisty redhead Siobhan to solve the crime and save her beloved brood. I'm going to try this, uh, set in County Cork. Here's a quote. Uh, if Janet Ivanovich and Maeve Binchy wrote a book together, Murder in an Irish Village would be the result. One, this one is delicious and fun. Okay, I will try a chapter on this and see how it goes. Um, but Ivanovich and Binchy together sounds very nice to me. And, oh, this one I know. <laughs> I have the third one somewhere. I'm missing the third book, but I do. It's in my house. I have, this is book three, four, and five, or just four and five here of the Queen Bee Mystery Series by Hannah Reed. This one, I started reading um, my, when my mom told me about it. She tells me about most books like this that are mysteries, but it's set not too far from me in Wisconsin, which is kind of unusual. Uh, so, um, so, not sure. Set in Moraine. Kettle Moraine is a larger area. It's... Um, yeah, very, like within a half an hour's drive of me. It's beautiful, beautiful part of the state. So um, this one features the beekeeper, what's her name? Story Fisher, her first name is Story. She lives at the end of this little cul-de-sac in a very small town in Moraine and ha like has bees in her property and starts running the local grocery store, which is very, very small. She's got a mom who's always kind of in her business and nosy. 
Her sister is a little younger than her. They're all adults, a little younger than her. And she speaks in text speak, which is a little annoying and a little grating, but she has a crush on one of the local cops that they were kind of high school sweethearts. And yeah, I really enjoyed this series. So I will for sure be finishing three, wherever it is in my house. I probably pulled it out to read somewhere a couple of years ago and it's in some random pile somewhere, but three, four, five, I will be reading them. Okay, just two authors to go. So this is by Barbara Ross. It's mm, the main clam bake mystery series. So this is clammed up the first one and I'm not sure what order these are in after this because they were kind of scattered on the top here. But I've got boiled over, stowed away, muscled out, fogged in, and iced under. So let's see what this is about. Julia Snowden returns to her hometown to rescue her family's struggling clam bake business. Mm, that was before a catered wedding on picturesque Morro Island turns into a reception for murder. When the best man's corpse, yikes, is found hanging from the grand staircase in the Snowden family mansion, Julia must put the chowder pot on the back burner and join the search for the killer. And with suspicion falling on her old crush, Chris Durand, the recipe for saving her business and salvaging her love life might be one and the same. This sounds cute. Um, ooh, it's very nicely, like, old eyes friendly, <laughs> which I appreciate. Um, I will for sure be reading this for several reasons. One, it's set in Maine, and one of my best friends currently lives in Maine. Uh, two, this was also another book series started... I start this first one from my friend Linda in Illinois and my mom um, has read these as well and really really likes them. There may be more at this point. I should check into it for Christmas. See if I need to get one or two and I can pass them on to my mom. So here's the series that I have. I will be keeping these. Okay and just one left. It's the first in a series. I know that they're still being published. The Cracked Spine by Paige Shelton. Um, <laughs> Delaney Nichols is on the literary adventure of a lifetime when she leaves the States for Edinburgh to take a job at the Cracked Spine, a legendary bookshop full of special editions, rare manuscripts. It's a house of biblio, deli biblio delights. One as eclectic as those who work there, Rosie and her dog, 19 year old thespian named Hamlet and Edwin the big boss. And there's Tom the bartender from across the street. Okay, blah, blah. Artifact from the shop goes missing. The owner's sister is murdered. I'm trying to solve a murder. This sounds cute. I will read this. Absolutely. Okay, so that's all I have for that. So if I can put these in here in order. I will do that later because you can't see what I'm doing. <laughs> Um, but that's not too bad. Okay, I'm getting rid of, ooh, one book, you guys. So much space now on my shelf. And then I'm going to try a chapter for uh, these two books, Murder in Irish Village and Grace Under Pressure. And I will start the first to try a chapter in the Gardening Mystery Series. Oops, this one, I think, by Mary Friedman. I will give those a shot and see how that goes. And I will do, I think I'll do a wrap up probably of all my try chapter stuff as another vlogmas day, but not too bad. Potentially getting rid of four, five, six, seven books, but one for sure. <laughs> hey, anything out is good, right? That's all I'm looking for here. So <laughs> something out. So yeah. All right. I'm going to get these back in their bin and see if I can figure out if some of these series are finished or not. Anyways, we'll see. I hope you liked this one and I will see you guys very soon in the next video. Maybe another sorting one. I'm not sure what I'm going to put up here next, but we'll see. So hope you're enjoying your December and I will see you soon. Bye.